Guys, dad's back. Dad is back in the house. A little two-week hiatus. Um, paternity leave. Had my first child. I'm back in a big, big way. We're here in full force. And on today's episode, we dive into a little bit of fatherhood, a little bit of how you know we're excited to have the kids out on the course when they're older. Um, and we also dove into a couple of stories that Tyler has had from some previous rounds. Yes. One of them being he golfed with a guy who had one arm, so we no longer have excuses on the golf course. Hope you guys enjoy the episode. They fight that the wrong way. I'll call the clubhouse. We'll book another 18 for tomorrow. Okay, they cheated on that. They fucked their balls. Yeah, no better time for the breakfast ball than now. <laughs> breakfast ball. Da, 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 this is the white stripes, everyone. Da, 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 what the mother F is up, you guys? Hey. I am back in a big, big way. Daddy. Ah. What? R- Ryan's a dad. Yeah. Two-week paternity leave. Two-week paternity leave. Uh, you guys just heard a weird voice before we get into Ryan being daddy now. We have sad news, mm-hmm. but important mm-hmm. news. Matt is no longer with us. We, we love Matt, but Matt and the Ubechik team have parted ways. And has absolutely nothing to do with him as nope. a person. We love Matt to death. Matt, if you're listening to this, we love you, buddy. Love you. We will never love forget you, you. We love you, Matt. Okay. Ryan. Ah. The fruit of your loins is now into the world. Did you wake up the morning after your, your son was birthed and you just immediately started fixing shit? All of a sudden, your forearms were a little stronger. You shook hands a little firmer. What day How was it? You Friday. Feeling? It was Friday morning. Yes. It was two Fridays, two weeks ago, two week paternity leave. Uh, one of the greatest two weeks of my entire life, obviously. Became a father. Um, and on top of that, I was at home for two weeks just looking at this child. Mm-hmm. Also, you guys didn't know what I was having. Neither did I. I had a boy. I talked about this on the episode. When I, when I finally found out it was a oh, boy. Oh, you spilled the beans to everybody? You, yeah, they know it's a boy. They know. Um... You were being weirdly cryptic about it still, even Why? after he was born. What do you mean? I, you text me like, baby baby was born healthy, mom is healthy, everyone's healthy and happy, he was so excited. And I was like, is it a boy or a girl? And you're like, can't tell you yet. There was, was a reason I did that. And I did that for my parents my wife's my in-laws my wife's parents um i don't i can't remember why i did that i think i was more so waiting to get a photo of him when he was a little bit like cleaner and that all that shit on his skin had dried up a little bit because they don't clean that off no, right away anymore this will leave they it leave that for there. 24 hours it's because weird. that's good stuff that's mm-hmm. really good stuff for the exfoliation um so i wanted to wait to get a photo but i also wanted to let them know like hey like your daughter or like your daughter-in-law, my wife is healthy. You no need to worry. Mm. The baby's out in the world. Um, so you could have just texted me like your godson is healthy wow. now in the world. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Way to sneak that in there, Tyler. <laughs> what if I'm not religious? Hey, your pseudo son. Oh my God. Um. So yes, I was cryptic about it and all, uh, I, I was texting you though and I did hear on, I think it was You Bet Your Radio, that Miles was like, why was he texting you and not me? It's like, well, because you're not a dad, Miles. You're was, like, you don't understand. Yeah. Tyler's done this twice. Mm-hmm. This is my first time. Um, so I naturally just text you. Also, I was, I, I okay. <laughs> yeah, let, I, me, let me tell you the story real quick. I told everyone you needed a delivery. I just left out what it was. Yes. I needed um, an asphyxiation because I was stressing out a little bit. I wasn't even stressing out. I'll get <laughs> no, to that. Wait, get, no, 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 no. Not asphyxiation. You don't know what that means. No, no. It's is that not, fixation. Fixation. Asphyxiation. He's getting choked. <laughs> well, maybe I just needed a good choking. <laughs> I was like, I needed, I, needed a, I needed to get off, so I called Tyler to choke me. Sorry. I did not need to get asphyxiated. I needed a fixation. So, um, we went into the hospital at 530, and... I tried to stop at the gas station beforehand. Mm-hmm. The contractions were happening, but I made it. I I made sure I asked my wife. Mind you, the hospital is two minutes down the road, which mm-hmm. is awesome. So I made sure I'm like, "Hey, can I run into the gas station really quick?" And she's like, she looked at me. She said, "That's that's no problem at all." I'm like, "I fucking love you. That's why we're married. That's why we're having this child together. It's because you're the best." Mm-hmm. And so I I. I put the put my truck in park and fucking sprint to the door just to find out that it's locked. 
Oh, too early. Yeah, and they were making donuts in there. There was people in there. I should have like pondered and been like, hey, I'm having a kid. I need to get in and get some like essentials real quick. Boom, 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 boom. Open the fucking door, bit. Um, what? The- <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> no, it's a robbery. Open the door. I Open need the- to get in. Open the door. I need somewhere to choke me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but they weren't. So then I'm like, okay, well, we're not going to stop at another gas station. So we went to that. And the gas station's like right across the street from the hospital. So we cruised over there. And, you know, there's a little bit of time. It's weird. When you're having a kid, you you have to tell your coworkers first, which is weird. Because mm-hmm. if you don't show up for work, they're going to wonder if something happened. So, like, I told a couple of coworkers before I even told my parents, which is also weird. Very. Uh, it's a strange world that we live in. But work just takes place over everything else. <clears throat> so, um, we got in at 530. And by 821, my new little buddy was out in the world. He cried a little bit. Um, and he was seven pounds, 13 ounces. He actually, he like, he doesn't, that's me knocking on wood. He doesn't cry that much. Uh, mm-hmm. just when he's getting his diaper changer because it's cold, you know, it's cold. Yeah, it's dude, a little, little some, he's got the opposite of that one UFC dude problem. His balls was cold. His balls was cold. Yes. Um, so once you get him zipped up, he's completely fine. He's the best little baby ever. And that's just like, I mean, I'm going to soak this in for what it is mm-hmm. because I need to soak it in. Number one, it's my first child. Number two, my second one's probably going to be a lot worse. Maybe not, though, because... That's what they say. Because my, wa- my wife is super chill. And in the home environment, <laughs> I'm pretty chill. I more so play a character of this like super, like, I'm going to fuck somebody up. So you've been lying to us this whole time? Well, kind of. And it's worked because you guys think I'm actually as hard as I am. Mm. You, you think I'm harder than I actually am. Okay. Um, but we're pretty chill. And I think that transferred over into our little guy. Um, his name's Cal. His name's Cal Sheely, which is my last name. You know, I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, I had two weeks off and it started on a Friday. So uh, two weeks from Friday, I'm not going to come in on a Friday. No, hell no. Everyone was gone anyway. So I'm like, well, I'm going to, you know, we had newborn pictures and I'm not going to go in. So I had actually had like almost two and a half weeks off and it was really nice. And lucky for me, I got two solid golf tournaments in that I watched from Thursday qualifier. Oh, you meant like you played in a golf tournament. No, 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 no. I got the 3M Open, which I was actually supposed to be at the Friday that he came. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, that luckily I didn't go because that would have been bad. Yeah. I wouldn't have made it back. Yeah. The no. De- the delivery was three hours from when no. we got to the hospital to when he came out. Three hours. Uh, I would have missed it. So I watched all the 3M Open and then I watched all of the Rocket Mortgage uh, Classic. Classic. Yep. Yep. Tony Fino took both of them. That was kind of cool. Yeah, I was uh, I I was in Iowa and Missouri during those. You can sports bet. None mm-hmm. of mine hit. Classic. None of I mean, them. Who would have guessed Tony to go back to back? Not me. Not me either. Uh, but it was a phenomenal two weeks. I did get out on the course with a buddy of mine uh, one weekend. So the next Saturday I got out. Mm. 86. That's the appropriate amount of time to wait. And she told me I could go too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we had the lake and like... If it would have been mom- like the weekend right away after, then yeah. no. No, I I, yeah. I I, wasn't even thinking about it. I was just trying to watch golf. Uh, also, that first Saturday, was Saturday, there was a good UFC card on. Mm-hmm. So in the hospital, I just watched... Um, I don't know, that would have been Friday night. So Saturday at home, I just watched UFC. Hell yeah. Did, like, you, did you show him his first UFC event? Well, yeah, we just watched UFC and golf pretty much the entire weekend. That's fucking sweet. Having a kid's so, sweet, isn't it? It is, yeah, because you get two weeks off. Yeah. <laughs> which is the best part about it. <laughs> yeah, and you have an excuse to be like, I can't get up to go get another beer because I'm yeah. holding this baby. Could you maybe grab me one, please? I'll tell you what, though. The transfer of the child is so much... Like, I picked up on that so quick. Yeah, right away, you get him and you're, like, super, super careful, and now you can just, like, hold him like a football. Yeah, and I I mean, nece- like, it's more so just, like... Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Like, like whipping flipping them around. them around, throwing mm-hmm. them in the, the crookier arm or whatever yep. they call it. Um, so I'm picking up on that really quick. And I have been changing diapers probably like sub 45 seconds. You do like a pit crew? You got to well, time yourself. It's fun. Well, getting the onesie unzipped is probably takes the longest. Dude, getting that thing back on, I think, is harder than taking it off. Yeah, and, I would agree. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it does. It does take a while to get back on. but um, Especially when they're kicking. Yes. Yo. Yeah, he's got some strong legs too. So... Um, the whole time I've kind of been thinking, because I'm a baseball guy, right? I don't follow baseball anymore, but I played all the way five years in college. Um, and then obviously every year before that. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't know. I don't know if, if like he can obviously choose whatever he wants to play. If he doesn't want to play at all, that's fine. As long as he's a nice, he's a nice young man. Mm-hmm. I'm happy. I'm going to get him super into Dungeons and Dragons. So he doesn't want to do anything but that. Yeah. Cal will be playing D&D with me and Tyler in yep. no time. 
Oh, also, it's yeah, Jake. That's only a, weirdo- I said there was a weird voice. It's Jake. Hey, guys. No, hey, guys. I don't know if I, 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 don't know if I want him playing D&D. Mm-hmm. I, what if he really likes it? Well, maybe like Monopoly or something. <laughs> no, that's way worse. <laughs> maybe like PGA 2K21. That's Ooh. cool, too, but... I might just get in a couple of sets of D and D books. It'll we'll be two thousand. It'll be two thousand thirty, and he'll be playing two K twenty one because they <laughs> yeah. won't come out with another golf game until then. Nope. Um. So I mean, I don't know where I'm leading in with this entire story, but that's. I mean, that's what I did. I literally watched golf. I watched Shark Week. I l- stared at him for hours a day. Um. And I'm looking forward to him growing up. Uh, I actually, I really enjoy this phase right now because. He also has a full head of hair. I'm talking Your more hair than me. So much hair. More head than me. More more head than me. <laughs> That's tough, well. but uh, more hair than me, and uh, it gives him some good character. Yeah, you he, know, he looks. Uh, he's got like the same hairdo as Kuzco. Yeah. Who's that? Uh, from Emperor's New Groove. Uh, is that an animated film? Yes, yeah. it is. Yeah. Okay, I know what you're talking. Yeah, about. Wrong lever, Kronk. You know yeah. Yep, yep. 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 Never heard of him. Uh, you never answered the question, though. <laughs> What's the question? Um, the moment your child was born, did you feel the dad strength rush into your body? No, because I'm already pretty strong. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> uh, no. I Did your back tighten up and maybe your knees start to get a little loose? No, but here's here's another like little side story. In the delivery room, um, I had a five-hour energy and a cup of coffee in my system without eating any food between 5.30 uh. And six fifteen a.m. probably, and so I was rolling. I was Wait, so my armpits were sweating. I was sweating all over. Meg went into labor, and you're like, "Hold on, let me make a cup of coffee." No, 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 no. Uh, I I brought a five RNG in my in my overnight bag, mm-hmm. ripped that on the way there, and then like while we were just kind of just waiting around. Oh, you know, like for you took it from the snack room. Yeah, right across yeah, the, yeah, right yeah. across the hallway. Um, so I was like two hundred milligrams deep. <laughs> of caffeine before I eat anything. And then I'm like, oh God, I'm starting to feel a little lightheaded. And all the nurses are like, you need to sit down right now. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm sorry. I, I shouldn't have even told you. Cause I just like, my blood sugar's low or something. Mm. They're like, somebody get him some orange juice. He's got it in his blood sugar. <laughs> Holy I'm fuck. like, all right, I'll take some orange juice. So they gave it to me. I drank it and I felt good. You so should then, have asked Meg to get you some. Oh my god, <laughs> doghouse um, immediately. No, nah, she was a champ though. Uh, and, uh, I thought that story was going a completely different direction. You were like, I mean? morning after I, I rip a five hour, have a cup of coffee. I thought you were going to talk about how you blew up your delivery room bathroom. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, God, no. I mean, I probably I don't even think I shit for like three no. Days that's you after. can't shit there. You're too stressed. It's well, impossible. I wasn't, it's not that I was stressed. I just wasn't thinking about how regular there's, I needed to there's be. There's way you know? too many things going on to take a poop at the, at the delivery room. Yeah, not the delivery room. At least wait to wait till triage. Or no, that, that I think triage is the delivery yeah, room. Yeah, it is. It's, it's the just uh, our, postpartum. Our postpartum wing. Yeah. yeah, we went to the postpartum wing. So, um, yeah, it was a cool experience. And um, not when I figured out I'm having a boy, obviously, like, you know, I have these all these thoughts of like, what kind of memories am I going to make with a little girl? What kind of memories am I going to make with a little boy? And now I have the little boy and all that shit just floods in. And um, I'm pretty excited. I'm really excited to like get a golf, get some golf clubs in his hands, mm-hmm. like throw some baseballs around, fucking shoot some hoops in the driveway. Um, I really want to wrestle bad. Cause like I, my go. dog's good for wrestling. Cause she'll bite me and then I'll bite her back. And um, <laughs> I mean, like we have le- my dog and I have legit wrestling. <laughs> we, need, we need to talk about the fact that you you're your- biting your dog. Like in the foot and shit. Like if he's if she's gonna bite me, I'm gonna bite her back. Cause that's like that's how dogs play. They bite each other. Yeah, but you, you can't bite your dog, Ryan. Why? That's so weird. What do you mean? You got like a mouthful of fucking fur. No, my dog doesn't shed. Still. Oh. That's a valid point, is it not? That, Jake? Okay, that is a good point. But, but still, still, it is a little weird. He doesn't shed. She doesn't shed. So. And also. I have a different type of relationship with my dog than a lot of other people. A lot of other people have dogs. Just yeah, you to bite have, each other. Just to have dogs. No, I have a dog that I have. I have trained intensely. She listens for the most part to just about everything I say. Like she, she it's kind of like drill sergeant, and then like um, whatever would be under the drill sergeant. <laughs> okay. Um, and then you know it's like, hey, it's it's wrestling time. Hey, she's fucking she's bite fired you. up. I'll like grab her by the grab her by the head and like throw it in the side of the bed. And um, it gets intense. So 
Does she don't as- think that's weird because it's not. Does I'll send as- you a video of it. Does she asphyxiate you? Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> no. Anyway, after you're done biting your dog, then what? You want your kid to wrestle. I like this. I want to wrestle the kid. Do you want your kid to be in wrestling? No. Or do you God, just want to no. like rough house? No, because I don't want to be a wrestling dad. It's fun. No. It's going to be cool. You've never been a wrestling dad. I am now. He I'm, doesn't. I'm going to sign him up next year. <laughs> I'm. Our, we're already in practice. No, because our, our back neighbors are wrestling parents and I, I like they're great people. I just I don't think. Like hanging out with other wrestling parents doesn't appeal to me because I think it's partially because I don't know a lot about wrestling. You should. You're a UFC guy. You know how important it is. Well, I also wrestled for three years when I was in third, fourth, and fifth grade. Really? So I do have like, I do have some sort of knowledge of the well, ground game. If he likes D and D and wrestling, he can come over. He can hang out with me. I'll teach him some shit. Okay. Well, that's fair. Yep. Yeah, I, I do think he needs to work on the ground game here in the next few years. Yeah, he said he's got kickboxing down. He's a kicking machine. Yeah, he, he like he kicks his foot into the diaper, and then I have to wipe his foot. And <laughs> you had to clean the shit out from in between his toes. Yes. Yeah, so I yeah. just like I like take a, I'll like kind of make like a hang loose sign. I'll put my <laughs> knuckles like on both of his ankles, and I'll grab each foot, one with the pinky, mm-hmm. one with the toe, and lift that baby yep. up. <laughs> you got, get him yeah, wiped you go off. like you go like th- I actually now I just started full on gripping both ankles. Yeah, I don't do the I don't do the finesse. I was anymore. worried about his ankles rubbing together. Yeah, um, they're they're tougher than you I, think. Yeah, I know. Um, but no, he is the best little guy ever. You got you pissed got, on yet? A, yeah, I had to. Uh, There's a couple times I had to shield this, it with the my hand, hand shield, and it's yeah. so weird. Like getting pissed on by any other person. Oh yeah, no, thank you. No, with the kid, you're just like, yeah, I'll just block it with my hand. Or even getting shit on too, like. Get shit on! Get shit, <laughs> shit on! Get shit on! <laughs> even getting shit on by um, a little kid isn't even weird because I mean you have wipes right there, you just wipe mm-hmm. it off, and they don't stink right now. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, yeah, we're we're I mean, it, for the listeners out there who have kids, you've been through before, you know exactly what I'm going through. For those who haven't had kids, aspire to have kids someday. Um, you pick up on it pretty quick. So, I mean, just a piece of advice from me being a father for almost three weeks now. <laughs> uh, don't don't stress yourself out of like there's no owner's manual on how to take care of this thing like they eat they shit and they sleep Mm -hmm. and as long as they have food and a nice place to put their head down it's about all they need yep and a pacifier pacifier works great too yeah mine neither of my kids took one really yeah mine he loves it yeah and it's just more so of like Ah, he's kind of bored. I'll just throw a pacifier. Or he just ate 10 minutes ago and he's hungry again. So yeah, wait till he gets a little older. You start playing games. Like, uh, I know some people that like try to throw the pacifier into their mouth. Mm, that's a good one. Um, but I never got that. So I take those little fucking cereal puffs mm. and try to throw them in their mouth from a distance. That's a good one. And bouncing off their face. Yeah. <laughs> um, good times. So yeah, I mean, the sleep's been going good. My wife has been getting up every three some hours. Are you nervous for toddlers? Because you got to hang out with my toddler for a little bit. And yeah, I golfed with them a little bit in the back. Yeah. Um, uh, lots and lots of energy with those little shits. Yeah, where does he get that from? Because you nor Becca have that energy. Uh, apparently, I used to. It's so long ago, I've completely blocked that out. But uh, they, they don't stop, Ryan. They don't stop ever. I think I can match it. You I think, think I can match the energy. Okay. Just get lots and lots of sleep now while you can. Well, now is the time when you don't get sleep because they no, can't sleep through the night. Dad gets some sleep. Mom has to wake up more. Yeah, no, I am getting sleep, and I I also feel bad about getting sleep. Don't don't because when the t- toddler time come around, it's your turn. Really? You you get up and you handle throwing. Dad, I think I threw up. <laughs> you handle that shit. <laughs> okay. Because mom fair. just woke up for a year straight to feed the baby. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. It, we're figuring it out. Yep. Like I said, you just figure it out on the fly. You ask advice to people who have been through it, and uh, it all works out good. So um, that's it. All right. Congrats, Daddy. Thank you. It's yeah. a good feeling. Yeah. I'm really excited. It's cool. Um, I He's going to have to be... I was thinking about this. Like, At what age is he going to beat me on the course at? And I'm going to give him Never. 25 years old. Really? Maybe when he'll beat me. So 25 plus 29 <laughs> is 54 so i'll be 54 and he'll be 25 no you'll be in your golf prime then yeah 54 will be your prime and just think about that for a second can, can we just think about that for a quick second i'm 29 right now you're 27 mm-hmm. 
we're in order to even get there and have that scenario of me playing my 25 year old kid is another 35 years. No, it's not. Sorry. 20, it's 20 is another, more years. It's another 25 years. <laughs> so, I mean, you can stress out all about your, you can stress all about your golf game right now, whatever age you are. You got another 20 some years to play it at yeah. least, if not another 30 or 40. And you keep doing something for 40 years. Imagine how good you're going to mm-hmm. get on it. And that's, that is a credit to old man golf because old man golf is like, well, my hips are shot. My back is shot, but I can still hit it right down the middle. It just goes to show that wisdom is so much more important in golf than talent. And, and youth. And it's if, more important than youth yeah. as well. And then you get the guys that uh, combine them, like Tiger, the GOAT. How wise was he? Because he was taught old man golf from the day he was born. Really? Yeah, his dad had him in the garage at a year and a half, hitting him the net. Yeah, that's true. And his dad is a classic old man golfer. Yeah. So Tiger had old man golf wisdom, plus the youth and the talent. Yeah. Well, and here's the thing about old man golf is that all of them hit it straight. Mm -hmm. And what is the biggest hole in my game right now is consistently hitting it straight. I can get my, I can get the distance. I can, I can do all that, but I just can't hit the ball straight consistently. And that's what they can do. It's going to take me 40 years to get there. Maybe. Yeah. So, yeah, but it's just fine though. Cause then you just get to build all the hype, build all the tension because the pinnacle of golf for people that are not on the tour is beating their dad. Yeah. My dad's not much of a golfer. Right. But you need to find your dad figure to beat. Well, I've already beat miles. Yeah. Not that he's a dad. No, figure, no. But he likes to call himself dad around here. He does. It's kind of weird considering he's not a father. Yeah. I don't think I'll ever lose to him again. I doubt it. I don't think you'll lose to him much ever again. I don't think so either. Which is kind of sweet. Miles is pretty in his head these days. <laughs> oh, that sucks. Um, not for us. <laughs> also, like, I've also been thinking, like, I want to be good now, but I have so much time to be mm-hmm. good. If I get good now, then I'm just going to be good for 40 years. I'm it, like, it, oh, well, there's nowhere to go. I'm a, I'm a 75 to 78 stroke golfer. It's like, well, now where do I go? I'm not going to get to, to shoot under 75. Like you have to be naturally gifted and you have to be playing a lot of golf almost every day. You got to be getting lessons. That's not me. So I'm never going to shoot under 75 consistently. You know, I talk a lot about, I don't really care how much I improve, right? You know, I'm I'm pretty happy just playing golf, but if I'm not better by the time I'm 55, I'm going to be pretty fucking pissed. Yeah, you're right. I will be too. I do want to be good when I'm 50. Yeah. And you know what? I'm fine. Like the rounds that I shoot, low to mid eighties in, which is where I sit consistently. I'm an 83 to 88 golfer consistently, Mm -hmm. but those 83 rounds feel so much better than the 88 rounds. They do. It's five strokes. I can't, I guess I can't confirm. I've never done that, but for me, it's just 10 strokes higher than that. So the 93s feel a hell of a lot better than the 90. Have you broken 90? I've not. Dude, you're, we got to get you to, we, you'll break nine. Best round ever is 91. Ooh, fuck. Yep. Fuck. 45 and a 46. I think when you get to a certain point, you understand how important putting is. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. for the last th- couple of years, I'm like, why can't I hit 300 yard drives? Why can't I lay a four iron up from 220 onto the green? Like, why can't I do this? It's like, well, buddy, why can't you make an eight foot putt for birdie instead of, blowing it past another eight feet and then put putting in for bogey. Yep. You know, you think of how many strokes you can just save by hitting one 30 foot putt around. Oh my God. Just one. Cause like a lot of the times those turn into three putts that for could us. Be three strokes right there. If you could just make one per round, you're saving yourself three strokes. Yeah. It's unbelievable. And then if you get good enough, you're dialing in on eights. Yeah. You, every eight footer is just automatic for you. And that's how the old man golf eight, 10 feet and in, just just give it to them. They're going to make that putt. 100% agree. Here's a point I want to make. If you want to feel better about your golf game without shooting better scores, just pick the people, pick the correct people to golf with that are going to make you feel better about your score. So, so you're if, if you're like, shooting high 80s, low 90s, play with somebody that's shooting high 80s, low 90s because mm. you're going to be battling back and forth. And it's not like... I thought you, know, you were going to say golf with someone who shoots in like the one teens. No, <laughs> So no. you feel really good. So no. me. <laughs> no, sh- play with somebody of your that's stature. Generous, Jake. 
there is a time there is a time and place to play with people who are better than you because I I genuinely think that's how you get better. Mm-hmm. But if you're out for a round, um, it's not like the other person's gonna be blowing you out of the water. It makes it more fun when you can still be a little competitive. Like you know, they they might beat you by one or two strokes. You might beat them by one or two strokes, and then you play with them again the next week, and then it shifts the other way. Like that's fun golf in my mm-hmm. mind. And at the end of the day, the score doesn't matter. All that matters is like, hey, we were only one to three strokes separated between each other. And I think that's how you can make the game of golf fun without, um, you know, like for me, I need to break 80 this summer. Well, no, I just play with people who I can be competitive with and that's still fun. Well, it's like there's like a lot of those dynamics in sports, right? It's like the the best and second best. There's not that much distance between the two, but they're always fighting for the best, right? Like I, I would almost compare it to like a Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady. Like when in like 2009 ish or what 2010 when the Packers won a Super Bowl, right? Like yep. everyone's like Aaron Rodgers is the next best. Yep. He's the one that's going to dethrone Brady. And there was that little bit of a struggle until like 2015. And it was just pretty clear that Brady was the best. Sure. But I think it's kind of similar like that with your buddies. Like obviously it's not to the two goat status, but there is like, I want to be better than my friend. And it's a back and forth, yep. a back and forth. Like you could win a Super Bowl, but he could win the next two type of thing. Yeah, you know, exactly. you never know. Yeah. So I think I think that's a good way to brighten up your rounds. I got a round for Saturday at 8 a.m. actually. Ooh. Wife, she signed off on uh, it. So I will be gone Friday. Um, really, where are you golf going? tournament Elk River? Ooh, Elk River, Minnesota. Yep. Catch me there. Our team is going to be bad. Is it a scramble team? Yeah. I haven't played in one scramble this summer. Oh, we also we missed the the annual play my dad Turkey Day scramble. Why didn't he tell us? It was last weekend. He did. I was gone. Oh, I was gone too. Kid. Yep. Paternity leave. Terrible timing. Um, I haven't played in one scramble this summer. <sighs> you got to get one in before the end of the year. So, and it's not like... Oh, wait. We're going to play in one for... There's one in Horace. Yeah, Irv's. We're the playing Irv's in that one. Scramble. You're in that. When is that? Uh, Like two weekends. I have the date right here, actually. It's like the 12th or something? Um, Yeah, you guys will be playing on... F- yeah, the 12th. The yep. big Irv's scramble? Yep. Yep. At what course? It's actually at the Meadows in Moorhead. Yeah. I do like the Meadows way better than Village. I haven't played that in like three years. Links course. Yeah. I actually shot my best nine, my best nine holes at the Meadows. Par. Nice. 36. Damn. Shot my chance worst to play there. <laughs> really? I hit a house there. I shot a 124 <laughs> yeah, at Meadows one time. Damn. Jesus. Yeah. Wheels were falling off big time. For me, that, that was the day to break 80 for me. I could not miss. Yeah. You should have played another nine. It was dark. Fuck. Glow in the dark balls. Here's a question. I saw this on Instagram the other day. If I were to come back the next day and play the back nine and I shot a 40, could I add those two scores up to make a 76? Uh, to me, like to you and me, yes, I would let you count that. But in an official capacity, I have no idea if that work counts or not. It's um, I don't either. It, but it's something I have no control over, and that is light. But like, think about the like in the PGA. If it gets rained out, they're allowed to go finish, and it counts. Like the That's next true. day when it's yeah, nicer. Yeah, exactly. That's that. That was part of the argument in in the comments. So the PGA can do it. They can come back the next day and finish. Right. Yeah, so that definitely counts. God, maybe I should go back and finish that round like this week. <laughs> if I go yeah. back, this is last summer. Yeah. If one I go year back later. one year later, I should actually, I might have a video or something to timestamp it. If I go back one year later and I shoot a 40, 41, 42 to break 80, does it count? Uh, if it's within 365 days. Then it counts. Oh, we're counting it. That's our official rule. God, I'd have a hard time bragging about that. But does it count because you've played a shit ton of rounds in between there? <laughs> a lot of practice. But there's been some bad rounds in between there. Just imagine really if like rounds. you play one hole, you par it, and you're like, I go get a bunch of lessons, come back, play the second hole, get a bunch more lessons, the third hole. Yeah. Yeah. Just play one hole at a time. <laughs> yep. One at a time. It's all it takes. Yeah, I don't know, Ryan. I think I think playing golf in between maybe nullifies. It, it does. It definitely does. Yeah. You just ha- there has to be one night sleep in between, then you got to finish. Okay. Um. So this bigger of scramble at the Meadows. Who's on our team? Uh, I think it's you, me, Miles, and Jade. Okay, that'll be fun. Yeah. You and me can ride together. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're gonna take a quick break, and uh, we'll come back. And I got some golf stories to share. I just got a golf story. Oh yeah, you were in the Lake of the Ozarks this, this that last one, weekend. and I have another one too. One okay. of the coolest golfing contraptions I've ever seen in my entire life. Oh okay. See you in a little bit. Ah, new sponsor alert, Ryan. 
Guys, this is huge. We've got a new sponsor. This is huge. And this sponsor is literally and figuratively huge. It is. So before we get into the next segment, we have to thank this sponsor. And our sponsor on the podcast is Carl's Place. You might be wondering what Carl's Place is. They do custom it's simulator pa- packages for guys like us. Do you know what that means, guys? The office, you, um, guys you, like you at home. And that means... We got a simulator, in, a the simulator in the office. There's a no. simulator in the office. Which is... Uh, We're not going to get any work done. No, no work. The only thing um, we'll do is this podcast and play on that simulator. We're going to get fired. Yeah, it's, it's going to be dangerous um, because... We went through Carl's place to get the office simulator. It is like it's it's like a simulator you walk into at um, any yeah. simulator restaurant uh, or so bar, or whatever. Arguably nicer. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, because number one, it's because here at home, correct. We can customize this thing exactly how I want. So we have it coming right off the shipping container bar. Um, the technology on it, the Unicor um, uh, launch monitor, it gives you all the metrics you need. Not that we look at that stuff, but sometimes it's kind of yeah. fun. Hey, there's, I bet I can hit, hit quicker ball speed than you. There's a function that shows you a zoomed in slow-mo of where the ball hit on your club face. I don't like it. It's cool. I love it. It's sweet. I don't like it because I don't want to see where I'm hitting yeah. it because it's so bad every time. Yeah, I would have loved to do that when I had the shanks. Just yeah. To see, like, just to see what it looked like to just hit, smash it off the hosel. Uh, But guys, but basically what Carl's Place does, you've got your office, you've got your spot at home. If you want a simulator, Carl's going to help you build it. Basically, they'll look at your space. They'll they'll see what you could they can fit in there. They'll see what you want. They'll talk about your budget and they'll build something for you. So it's not just like one simulator brand. Carl goes out and he finds what's going to fit for your place. Um, And I could not be more excited that we have one at the office. Yeah, we we basically I mean, we have like 20 foot ceilings here. So we want the biggest one we can get (laughs) Um, just to give it like that, that real simulator feel. But I mean, you guys remember me last winter. It was me. It was a hitting mat, my clubs and a golf net right in front of me. Um, And that's the beautiful thing about Carl's place is like the customization. They will walk you through it. Hey, you want a bar in your simulator? Done. You want uh, bag racks and this other accessory and all that? Done. They'll help you customize it to your space exactly how you mm-hmm. want it um, for very affordable prices. Yeah, too. yeah, yeah. Sounds expensive, right? Sounds pretty expensive. Uh, you can buy a set of clubs for more than your the starting simulator package. Correct. It's like under twenty three hundred bucks. So like, yeah, I mean, save up for a little bit, but that's affordable. One hundred percent. And I mean, think about how much you spend. Uh, in the four to five months, you can golf outside in the Midwest. Mm-hmm. We spend um, way more than twenty three hundred bucks golf on golf every year. Oh, hundred percent. And then that's sort of on accident. And the longest part of the year is the winter when you can't mm-hmm. even get out and golf. So, um, hey, you can drink your beer at home for free. We can drink the beer at the office here for free. You can make your own food. You can save a bunch of money um, by putting the the simulator right in your space. Uh, you know what? The one of the first things I asked how to do on it because I don't understand technology. And it's way above my head. Uh, Jake set it up most of it with Jade. Yep. And uh, the first thing I asked him is, "Can you max out the gimme range, please?" Yeah, <laughs> <We're> <laughs> that is that. true. <laughs> um, guys, so if you are in the market or want to be in the market for uh, your own custom simulator, wherever you want to put that, uh, head over to carlofet.com. That's C A R L O F E T dot com. Use promo code Double Bogey, and hey, use that promo code. We're gonna give you ten percent off of any Carl's Place enclosure. And impact screen. Yeah, double bogey. One word. Capitalize the D and the B. Carl of ET.com. Go check it out, guys. We're gonna en- we're enjoying the shit out of ours already. Get prepared and, uh, to see a lot of simulator stuff from us. Yeah, you're gonna enjoy yours as well. So uh let's get back into the show. All righty. <laughs> Golf stories, you got some. What are they? Uh before we get to the Ozark strip, I have to talk about a casual round I played the other night. Becca's best friend lives all the way in Idaho. Her and her husband were back in town visiting, and her husband just got into golf, so we wanted to go out with me and his father-in-law. Wow. So we go out, we go to Village Green, Mm. and um, father-in-law, Marty, fantastic Not your father-in-law. Not my father-in-law. Marty, great, great guy. Marty was born with one arm. No shit. And Marty is lights fucking out. Wait, shoot, 77? I don't remember what he (laughs) shot. We only played nine because we ran out of time. Sure. But- Marty has this contra- contraption that he can strap to his arm that is custom made for him by some random welder that he knows. It is like a bar that is also spring loaded with a wheel system and it's on his lead arm. So he can like put the club in sideways, bend it back in and then it sticks. So then all he needs is you put his other hand on and it, it, it's, it's still got all the spring in the world. 
and he's been using it for like 20 plus years and he beat the shit out of me. Like it wasn't even close. He outdrove me on almost every single hole and I was playing pretty good for me. Did you get a video of this? Uh, I can ask him for one. Actually, I might have got a picture of it. Because this sounds like... It is a piece of technology, let me tell you. So wait, so like it straps to his forearm, correct? Yes, right? yep. And so the so clubs... So like where your wrist would be. So yeah. his, his arm, he, does, his, he was born without his arm like at the elbow. Sure. Okay. So then like straps up here, and then there's like a regular like plastic forearm, and then where the wrist would be is like a really hard spring mm -hmm. with a bar in the middle of it. And then at the end of that is like a hook with a wheel. So then you slide up the handle of it through this wheel and then it rests in like a little clip. So is I'm he not swinging following with, so whatsoever. So is he swinging with, you know, is he swinging with the missing arm and his back hand? Yeah. So it, okay. now it's just like a normal swing and that spring allows it to be like a wrist. Oh, so he can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He hit it straight as an arrow. It's like old man golf, but he's still got good distance. Do they have a tour for like Paralympians? Uh, if there was, Marty could dominate it. It just sounds like I'm making too many excuses for having two arms with my shitty golf game. That's where I was getting to. Like, we can never complain again because Marty is out there dialed in with one arm and a piece of metal. They on do it. have a, they do have like a Paralympian. I don't know. Paralympian is not the right word. Paralympics. Para, yeah, but they have, they have golf for like disabled people with one arm or one leg. It was just on a couple weeks ago. A guy hit a hole in one with one. I'm pretty sure he hit a hole yeah. in one with one arm. So we need is, to suck it up. <laughs> you gotta get a photo of that. I will. I'll ask him for one. You should. You should have got a photo and posted it to the page. I should have. Uh, that sounds pretty cool. Though. Marty's that, a big fan too. So thanks for listening, Marty. Yeah, that's sweet. Um, no, I don't want to play against him. No, me either anymore. <laughs> I really did, but then Marty kicked my ass. So well, he, he and he can out like is he does he joke around kind of? About, oh yeah. So he could literally be like, you just lost to a guy with one arm. Yep. And I don't want to be that guy. I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, God, what did he say? He was giving me shit because I was complaining about how hot it was and he was wearing a long sleeve shirt. Uh -huh. And he's like, yeah, you're complaining. I'm wearing a long sleeve. And then later on in the round, he was giving, uh, he was complaining about me being hot. I'm like, well, this coming from the guy that was bragging about his long sleeve shirt. He's like, yeah, well, I also don't want to scare the Bevcart girl with my RoboCop arm. <laughs> <laughs> that is funny. And that's not something you see every day. No. Um, that's pretty damn cool though. I'll yeah, tell you what. It was sweet. Um. Marty, you're you're the fucking man, dude. I fucking love you, Marty. I wish I could be that dialed in. I fucking love you, Marty. <laughs> yeah. Speaking Ozarks. of Ruth from the Ozarks, you were there. I was. I was in the Ozarks. Uh, we were back home. We went home again. It felt good to be home again, Ryan. Uh, we went to Osage National for the second year in a row. Mm. Played. It was only six guys this time. Bummer. So, so it was three and three. We drew sticks for um, drew sticks for teams. No for way did you guys. That was rigged. No, I swear to God, it wasn't. Because I know Miles wasn't golfing with Jade. That was probably no, his he number did. one. He did for the last nine. Yeah. But for the first 18, I guarantee there's a stipulation that he wasn't golfing with Jade. No, we all drew sticks right in no front. No shit. Yeah. It was okay. legit. And because, right. like, we had, there was two people from Bush there and they ended up yeah. on the same team. Like, if we rigged it, we would have separated sure. them. Sure. Yeah. yeah. That makes um, sense. So the teams were Nolan, good, good guy Nolan, Kyle, good, good guy Kyle, and Jade. Versus me, Miles, and Russ. Yep. I think we talked about Russ last year. Maybe. Um, Miles and I were a problem. We were awful. Why? We played like such fucking shit that we... we okay, so... What were you worried about? You I had no stresses. Miles. No, it really wasn't bad. You're not lying. <laughs> nah, no, because he... <laughs> Miles was playing bad, but this is like one of the first times I've been with him. Where he was playing bad and he, he didn't really let it affect his mood that much. Interesting. He was still pretty chipper. I mean, I'm sure you guys were hungover too. We no were dangerously hungover. I mean, 8 a.m. tea time Oof. after getting absolutely blasted the day before. Uh, that that wasn't a great feeling. Um, but so we played we played the first nine um, mountain course. Gorgeous. Arnold Palmer course. One of the nicest courses I've ever been on. AP. Yep. Next one. Lynx course. Another great course. It's got that big ass sign with mm -hmm. the Elks on it and stuff. Um, then we were all feeling good. It was perfect day out. We're like, you guys want to play another nine? Like the girls are all drunk at the bar somewhere. Like, 
we could sneak in another nine. Yeah, you could stuck in another 18. And we could have. Uh, so we go up to the clubhouse. like, yeah, we got one in 20 minutes, two tee times in 20 minutes. They're yours if you want them. So then we got to play the third nine, the uh, the river course, another Arnold Palmer one, AP. which is super, super cool. Uh, it's got the, I think it's the Missouri River running all through it. Um, yeah, it would make sense. It was in Missouri. So Yeah, but there's a bunch of cool rivers in Missouri, apparently. Oh, um, I'm not 100% sure. So Missourians... Get off my ass if I'm wrong. <laughs> yeah. um, but so we we switched up the teams, and basically all that ended up happening was Russ and Jade switched. Okay. So Jade was now with me and Miles, and Russ went with Kyle and Nolan. And we right away, like when Miles and I were playing the first eighteen, there were like three or four holes where it was just a hundred percent Russell's shots. Like we didn't. I don't want to play in that herb scramble with you guys. We didn't contribute shit. Like the first three holes, Miles and I both played lights out. And we're like, this is really be fucking great. Birdies? Like, uh, yeah, we birdied the first hole, parred the second hole, birdied the third hole. I hit the best drive of my life off a fucking cliff. It went like 315, 320. A little bit of a fade to the dog leg, dog right. leg right. Yep. Remember, I almost drove the green on that one last year? Yeah. I well, drove it right because it's a big uphill green. No, you're thinking of a different one. Oh, but yes, you you played lights out there last year. I, I okay, yep, yep. That was the the benchmark for us remembering holes. We're like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Ryan drove it over the water on this one last time. <laughs> I'll never hit the ball like that again. No, you were in the zone. I was, if they will. Yep. Um, but we were super hungover. We were drinking the whole time. We golfed for seven hours. I peed one time. Jeez. I was so dehydrated. By the end of the last night, I was ready to be done. I believe it. I was I was pooped. Played like absolute horse shit. Uh, Russ carried the team for the front. So we were only lost by two on the first 18 holes. So we're like, all right. It was pretty even. So then we switched with Jade. And it just became so apparent that me and Miles were the issue. Really? <laughs> because Jade wasn't playing as good as Russ because Russ was on his game. Yeah. And we lost by like four strokes in nine, nine holes, holes. Damn. in a in a scramble we bogey that's tough so many holes for you scrambling. can't bogey scramble holes you yeah. just you just can't it was it was a real tough look we hit way too many shots out of the sand for a scramble sure um but yeah by the end of it i was i was ready to go back um on the last hole the last hole of the third nine we decided it was too far out of reach for us to catch him so we're like we're gonna play for i think it was a hundred bucks um all of a sudden miles was back Oh, it was unbelievable. Hundred bucks a guy or hundred bucks a team? A team, I think. Okay, I don't remember the dollar amount. It was enough, but it wasn't outrageous. Okay. Um, Russ goes up, hits a fucking bomb straight. Nolan goes up, hits a fucking bomb straight. Kyle was playing old man golf. He hit a really good drive straight, but it wasn't like a fucking three hundred yard bomb. Miles comes up there, just he, he frustrated, tired, the whole nine. Hits one like 325. Really? Longest drive I've ever seen him hit in my life. No shit. Like there's a drainage ditch that was at like 300 yards. We're like, we just got to, We're some people were trying to lay up. Like, we're not going to get to that, right? We're not too worried about it. Miles cleared it and kept rolling. Really? Um, yeah. I hit a really good drive there too, but it didn't really matter because Miles was there. So I had no pressure to swing. Um, next, next. Next shot on the hole, Jade and I both fucked up. Miles sticks it on the green, par five. Really? Um, so then we ended up birdieing, but they also birdied. So we tied him. Nobody pays any money. But it was just insane to watch how bad he played all day. And me included, to just play like fucking horseshit. And then all of a sudden, there's money on the line. Everybody's watching. We played the last hole together and then just crushes one down the middle. And then you could just see him. Just the energy came back. Oh, little, yeah. Little color in the cheeks, little fucking pep in the uh, step. Everyone was happy again. So vibes were great to end the round, despite 26 holes of pure mediocrity. Well, it's like our uh, dear friend Matt always says, the last hole is always the easiest one. <laughs> yeah. You know, the last hole is always the easiest one on the course because that's what brings you back, right? Yep. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, it, you guys were destined to have a good, have a good, 27th hole at that point yeah it would have been a real insult to so you, how far was your ego putt oh long ways like like 40 someone's got to put that in yeah <laughs> yeah someone's got to put that in for yeah big dogs fresh out of mulligans you know yeah i yeah. get it uh no i'm 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 bummed i miss it but i'm not because i also had a child right so yep, yep, um, yep. that was pretty cool uh, i don't think anyone was too mad at you for not being there i hope not 
Yeah. Except I'm for help- everyone that I just told you didn't want to go. Oh, really? <laughs> I did tell one person that. It was kind of funny. Did you tell them then after that? I think so. I you can't just drunk. leave them hanging like that. Pretty also. drunk. Who, uh, <laughs> any, like, any good, good fan interaction there? Oh, yeah. Yep. They met one dude that said he loves three-putt poker because he watched the video. So nice. That was cool. Uh, yeah, there's a handful of breakfast ball fans. Um, we were there in Iowa the week before. We went to an IndyCar race. Jake was there for the IndyCar race. Yep. And then we did, but went to a bunch of small town bars for the small town bar tour. Then Jake and Jared went home. And then we had high V meet and greets. And Miles was there. They got us security guards. Hell yeah. Uh, they were security guards, were great, great guys. What kind of combat training did those security guards uh, have? Former FBI agents and Marines. Wow. Um, that is sick. Yeah, very sick. Uh, great guys named Lance and Brian. Lance and Brian, if you're listening, you guys are my favorite. Love there. you guys. Docs to FBI agents right there. <laughs> And they're not, they're former oh, FBI. Oh, you're good. You're dude. right. They're you're out. Right. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. I think. <laughs> Yikes. Uh, Lance and Brian's, their last names are, no, uh, I, I won't give away anything. Uh, no, but we're there, the security guards, like they had miles, like they walk miles in and like bring him to the spot, like next to a giant tower of bush light. And so like people were in line to meet him and stuff. And the very first person at hy V gets an autograph from Miles and came running over to me because I was just standing on the side like taking pictures. He's like, can we get your autograph? Hell Take yeah. pictures? And I was like, fuck yeah. Did you get my autograph too? Uh, no, I didn't. But I signed it Breakfast Ball instead of You Betcha. Nice. Yeah. So their merch says nice, that's huge. BB instead of YB. Um, and then the security guys are joking like, do we need to get you a line too? And those are the last people. <laughs> For, first, for, the first and last for four more meet and greets <laughs> no that shit. had any fucking clue who I was uh, so it was great I started off on a huge high it felt really cool we're still in the phase where like it's super sweet for people to recognize us it is yeah, yeah. it is it's really cool uh, when people come say what's up and yeah, uh, yeah it, like if you see us out, out in the court we're, we live in Fargo and we golf course around here if you see us out and about come shoot the shit for oh, a yeah. bit we I love might, it I'll 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 play you ten bucks a hole, but <laughs> you will. Uh, you might not get away without a little wager going mm-hmm. on, whether you take it or not. But um, yeah, um, we're gonna wrap this podcast up, guys. It, we were all over the place. Mm-hmm. Obviously, I had a lot to catch up on. I haven't been back for two weeks, um, but we're back in a big, big way. I got my first four man scramble on the books two weeks from now. You want to go hit the simulator or what? Uh, I got I got shit to do. Shit, so no, we've been playing too much already. I actually um, do too. Carl's place, Carl of ET.com, guys. Simulators, they're there. We're gonna go. Oh, well, maybe I'll go play on two or nine. Um, yeah, we'll see you guys next week. Love you. Love you. Hell, that's a breakfast ball.